welcome back to another episode of World of Tank Splits, where today uh, I will first of all tell you where I have been for the past, uh, well, week and a few days where I haven't been uploading. Now, I've been having quite a bit of stress uh, in real life playing less Blitz. I've been also then, of course, uploading less YouTube videos, as you've seen. However, that stress period is now gone and I am back at Blitzing. I'm back at getting some good results in and I'm back at making some hopefully really, really nice videos for you guys. So, today... Um, which is probably the reason you've clicked on this video, is an absolutely astonishing T22 medium game which I've had today. Uh, in this replay you're going to see why this tank is absolutely overpowered, why you should get it yourself, and why I think uh, that getting good results in this tank is pretty pretty easy if you know how to use it, and I'll be showing you how to use it correctly. Now, without further ado, let's get straight into the replay. Here we are on Fort Despair, I'm playing my T22 medium, and we are spawning on the southern spawn if you have a look at the enemy team lineup, you can see that they've also got a T-22 and a T-92E1 and the rest of the tanks on their team are two heavy tanks and three tank destroyers, which means that they are probably not going to go uh, on the medium slash light tank side, which would be to my left, but they are probably rather going to go into town where they would have the advantage, um, which is, you know, conform to their lineup because a lot of TDs, they work better in close quarters combat, at least on a map such as this. Which is why I am deciding to go into the cap circle and to start building up some pressure on the enemy team. You can see this cap circle is ticking up. We've got two tanks in the cap circle, so it's actually going to go up pretty quickly. And which is going to force them to come towards us. And if they come towards us, and we can play hull down here as you can see, uh, we are probably going to be able to farm them pretty easily. So you can see this enemy T22 medium here, he's a pretty good player. He is side scraping in his tank and if you have a look at what his tank looks like, you can see that his left is, well the left side of his tank, at least how he's angled right now, is grey. Which would hint that, well, you can penetrate it, but you cannot because this tank has got a V-shaped hull. And this V-shaped hull means that if you side scrape in this tank or reverse side scrape in this tank, enemies are not going to be able to pen your lower plate, uh, your your side armor. And this is what he's utilizing correctly. And this is a game mechanic, well, uh, especially especially efficient for this tank, which I'll also be utilizing as you can see right now. This grill is bouncing his shot of my side. Also, he shot heat, which is not a smart decision because the side of this tank is actually spaced armor, so his heat is not very effective. Also, he hit my tracks, so he's not going to pen this either way. Now, you can see again, this T22 medium, he's again side scraping, and if you have a look at his side armor here, you're going to see it in a second, it looks pretty, well, confusing. Some players, and especially um, statistically worse players, are going to think, well, they can penetrate the side of this tank. However, they cannot. Now you can see me going in here. I'm taking quite a beating. I've took eight, I've taken 850 damage or so. Um, all of that in return of well, why did I do that? Well, I wanted to kill the grill, which is something I actually achieved to do, managed to do, and this is now going to allow us to well flip the advantage around because the enemy team have taken. If you have a look on the minimap, they've taken our south which means that they are they are now having at least an advantage in terms of numbers and they are probably going to be able to kill the tanks uh, of our team which are you know the grill and the t 921 which means that we are going to have to build up some pressure here now thanks to this m103 who is actually doing a brilliant job of pushing in he's using his hp and he's allowing me to go in and take down this t22 without the help of this m103 it would have been a well it, the game would have probably turned out different, we would have probably lost it here, but thanks to his crucial contribution, I guess you can say, um, of just going in balls deep, using his HP, allowing me to push in and kill this T22 is actually going to be a big factor uh, considering the win of this game. Now, I managed to take out the enemy FV215B183, which means that they've now only got three guns compared to three guns on our side. Sadly though, our WT Alf Panzer 4 dies, or Panzer 4 dies, and this puts us in a 2v2 situation now that I've killed the STI. So, still, uh, yes, the, there is no gun advantage on the enemy team, however, they still have the HP advantage. And now this E75 is making a mistake. He thinks, well, he can push in and easily kill this M103, but what he does not think is that I can also go out here and have this building between me and the Hori T2, which is going to allow me to take out this E75. Now, it's again, 
It's a two versus one. It's the first time this battle that we've actually got the advantage and it's going to be taken right now as the Hyori T2 actually takes down my good buddy, the M103 here, who's been playing very, very well. Now, you can see me utilize the reverse side scrape tactic again here. I'm using HE because I didn't want to peek up too much. I maybe could have tracked him and maybe put some cheeky uh, heat, uh, heat shell into his lower plate, which doesn't happen, but he bounces off my... Uh, well, rear side armor here, and this is going to allow me to put two shells in, in well, in return. Now I know that the Hori T2 has got weak side armor, which means I can pen this rather steeply angled side armor of his uh, with my APCR, and now I am back into reverse side scraping. I'm always trying to bait his shot, which is something you should do in the T22. Uh, you shouldn't be poking out, um, you know, frontally to the enemies. Of course, you can get lucky and they are going to bounce, but. Uh, actually using this really really strong v-shaped hull here uh, is what you want to do especially in this tank now again i managed to make him bounce and now it's pretty easy to take him down i dropped my adrenaline just to secure that win and there we go 6875 damage it's the biggest result i've had in this tank so far i've been playing 12 battles in it 100 percent win rate this is absolutely beautiful now, if we have a look at the team statistics, of course, if you have to do 6,800 damage in order to win, uh, the rest of your team isn't going to do much. Of course, a huge thank you to the M103 on our side, Tehran L or Tehran E, could also be an I, uh, who's been, who's maybe not been doing that much damage, but he has been using his HP in an efficient way, enabling me to do the damage in return and to actually secure the win in this game. Of course, uh, the enemy Hori and E75, as well as FE2 and 5B183, they've been doing a lot of damage. Uh, and they've actually been, you know, really the, the force behind the enemy push. They've been what makes, what made their push effective. And also, congrats to the enemy T22, who may have not done that much damage, but he has certainly been playing really, really well. As you can see, he has been using the strengths of the T22. If we have a look at the efficiency, of course, I tracked the grill and something which may seem interesting, I actually took down uh, the Amorak of the T22 with one of my shells, which is, uh, I think you should also know that, and um, one of the weak spots or the weaknesses of the T22 is the Amorak, which is located on the frontal upper hull, which means, and this is also a weak spot, which means that if enemies are going to shoot your weak spot, at least frontally, they are most of the time going to hit your Amorak and damage it, and in the worst case, you are going to get Amorak. I've got a lot of my good clan mates who've also bought the T22 or, or had it since a long time, uh, who frequently say that they're getting Amorakts quite often in this tank, uh, and that is because, you know, the Amorak is just a weakness in this tank. But this doesn't change anything about the fact that this tank is, in my opinion, the best T10 medium tank uh, from the non well, from the non-regular tech tree tanks. Uh, so, you, of course, you're going to have to pay for this tank, but it is absolutely overpowered and a really, really nice tank as you... Uh, as you saw. I hope you will forgive me for the break I've taken here uh, from uploading. It's been two weeks, however, now I do really feel refreshed and I am really, really motivated to make more content for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to leave a like, share and subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, any comments to make, some feedback, some suggestions, just write them in the comments. I'll have a look at each and every one of your comments just as usual. I hope you enjoyed this video. That was it from my side. See you next time. Snake out.